Sadamas. I am being interviewed by Keith Andrews. And go ahead and listen to his podcast and his shows. And I think he's doing a really great job. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. This is episode 722. I'm here with the beautiful and talented Melissa DeMont. It's a real honor and privilege having you back on the brand of the Keith Andrew Network for a second time. It's great to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. No, likewise. For people who want to know what my talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a learning disability, I can still have out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. It's a proof to them you can stem out to something. With that being said, half hour every time. You can say anything you want, talk about anything you want to talk about. So how you been? You know, I haven't seen you in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, um, I moved out to California for like two years, uh, stayed there, um, lived out in L.A. Uh, the summer heat, experienced the uh, unfortunate events of like fires and stuff. And unfortunately, that's still happening out there. Um, <clears throat> met a lot of cool people too and uh, decided that I wanted to move to a more affordable place so we moved uh, down here to Tennessee so we're down in Nashville now and I met a lot of cool people here everything's been really nice uh, started back up in my acting uh, again and uh, everything was going good and then uh, you know COVID happened so <laughs> Well, hopefully it disappears soon. That would be really nice to have yeah. people back to normal. <laughs> yeah. And if you ever in New York, we should definitely hang out. Yeah, definitely. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you some acting questions, and you can ask me anything you want. Sure. You know, no cards up my sleeve. So with that being said, normal pound season, and let's have fun with it. Okay. <laughs> but the first one I want to ask you is, of all the roles you have played in the past, so what were some of your favorites? Oh, some of my favorites. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think about this. Um, I think all of them had like a special place in my, you know, my heart because like each one, you, you, as you take as an actor, when you're first starting out, you grow and you uh, learn from every role that you take on and every production that you're part of. Um, I, I guess I enjoyed a lot working with, um, working with, uh, what is now called, um, what was called Case at Midnight, but now it's called, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different name. Sorry. It's, uh, Thunder, some, something Thunder. They changed the name of it at, at the end of the production. <laughs> Um, but I got to play uh, a young, like, uh, cop, uh, well, patrol person on, a, on site in a government building. And it was just like this kind of like Manson-esque kind of a thriller that we had. And it was kind of cool seeing all like the graphics that we, were, that we were doing. It was like based in the 80s. So it had like that horror, like thriller type feel to it. <laughs> so <laughs> it was fun to do that. Um, I recently landed my first network gig, which was really cool. Um, I played a character. It aired already, um, on the Oxygen Network. Um, I played a character who, in, in real, it was a reenactment, um, a character who, I guess was, you know, down in her luck and everything and she just made bad decisions and it's uh again it's for the oxygen network channel so 
I'll yeah. give you. I'll send you info on it too afterwards. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now the next question I was going to ask you is: Are you interested in doing voiceover work? Voiceover work? Um, not at this moment. No, I, I've done some ADR, but not not uh, like not for like anime or anything or cartoons or uh, n nothing yet <laughs> of that. <laughs> Don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> yeah. True. True. Do you, do you like to do that? Do you? I do. And, you know, okay. in my free time, I do a lot of you know, fan-made parodies of Dumbo and Jumbo Book. Okay, okay. I just find, for me, people think, oh, well, you, you like Dumbo and you like Jumbo Book? How old are you? <laughs> but to be honest, it's the reason I asked you off the air if you would like to do something. You don't have to if you don't want to. It's because I always wonder, you know what? I want to be that per <laughs> Okay, I don't want to be that person. But I want to be the, the person sitting there and say, like, okay, you go and say if you're the right script. I like to see every single person do the routine of reenacting their lines, how they would do it. So for me, as a fan, and I love that stuff since I was at the age of four, I can see, like, you know what? I can make my own parody of this. I can put these lines together and make my own what if, you know, um, they did it this way. What if they did pick this person over that person? Why not just have fun with it? So for me, I like doing that type of thing. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> I know, I had too much free time on my hands. No, no, it's good to, like, explore and stuff, so that's fun. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And if you ever change your mind, definitely let me know. The next one I want to ask is, do you think honesty is the best policy? Honesty, yes, I do. Um, because if you don't have honesty, I feel like you're you're not presenting yourself um, in the most uh, genuine aspect as you can as a person. No, I agree with you. Not to talk about politics or anything, I sort of yeah. slightly follow the Pope's but a sort of funny post on Facebook is this woman saying, you see that over there? And I was, I had four, 1,470 people. And now it's growing back, you know, it's only 10% difference. Who really cares? I was just growing back, knock on wood. But the reason it's growing back, because it went from 70 to 58, because I had the post saying, woman saying, see that over there? It's an airport. If you don't like this country in history, go use it. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, you know, I thought it was interesting. And then I realized the next day, huh, my new following really took a nosedive. So <laughs> I guess being honest kind of works both ways. Yeah. You know, it's George Collins said, um, time to find the words where everyone likes your opinion. You know, they always say your opinion's great, but when you give someone your opinion, all of a sudden you're an asshole. <laughs> so it's, it's funny how that works. <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, I guess, I guess I should have just stayed quiet or like, you know how they have that saying, if you don't have not, anything nice to say, you know, don't say anything at all. <laughs> so That's point too. <laughs> It's funny it's immense in a hat. I didn't mean that throughout, but I do apologize. Yeah. But it's funny it's immense in a It's like if someone thinks you're an idiot, it's better to say nothing than open your mouth and prove them right. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to make you laugh. <laughs> but the next thing I want to ask is, with everything that you accomplish, think about a demanded director, producer, or cast me, what made him or her difficult to work with? Um, I don't think I've had too many of those instances. Um, I mean, I've had some instances where it was just, you know, maybe lack of communication. And I think that's, that's a lot of, like, not just uh, set-wise, but I think, um, 
in any kind of aspect of business that you have, just lack of communication between people. And I think that's what, you know, drives something to go in a downward spiral, you know, and that, again, that applies to any, any business in general. Yeah, I agree. Now I'm going to ask you a hard hitting one and I want you to throw it right back at me. <laughs> have you ever been stereotyped? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, as the um, as the Latin girl, you know, who does drugs, you know, who's the girlfriend of, you know, the gangster, you know, or something like that. Um, I haven't gotten a maid role yet, but I'm sure that that will probably be in the lines. Um, you know, it, it, it's a funny business. You know, you get when you when you you know, you want to get your foot in the door. So you kind of have to take some roles that you may not want to take. Um, but you have to move forward. And hopefully, you know, after people see you a couple of times, you know, maybe that will move you forward as well. Um, have you, have you also experienced these issues as well? Yes, I mentioned that. Um, I was going to actually, you know, play a game with you, but we can do that after I answer the question. Sure. You know, for me, Hey, hang on one second. Let me just flip the light on. Okay. There you go. Now I'm not in the dark. <laughs> All right. So for me, we like you in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> for me, people are like, you know, and I am guilty of this. When I was in high school, I call it the boomerang. You know, you throw it and you say, I don't have to do this. I have a disability. You know, I used to um, say I'm retarded, you know. Things will be handed to me. People will feel sorry for me. And I'm just doing this for the boomerang effect. I know it could be obnoxious. And then, as you know, the boomerang will come back and whack you outside the head and be like, you know what? All those years, two, three years, you're saying you have a disability, you're this, you're that, you don't have to do anything. Now people will know you as a hey, you're the kid with disabilities. You don't have to do anything because things will be handed to you. For like an example, when I was in high school, there was something called the SATs. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I don't have to do votes, you know, because I read and learn on a fifth grade level. Yay for disability. <laughs> but, you know, it got me out of the test. But at the same time, can't go to college, uh, can't get a master's, can't get a BA, can't be a CEO of your own company. So it's a pro and a con saying, yes, you can throw it, but just be aware that will come back and whack you in the ass and ruin and stereotype you. And also for acting wise, people say, and this is the game I want to play with you. Well, not in that way. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> so anyway, but the game I want to play is when you look at me, and I always ask people this, they say, what do you see? And well, oh, I see a scientist. I see, and, and there's nothing wrong with scientists. You know, but I'm giving you an example. Jeff Goldblum, um, Data from Star Trek. And, um, and there, those people always play, you know, scientists or doctors, and they always get parts like that. Yeah. And sometimes being stereotyped, it's kind of good, I guess. You yeah. look like, mm -hmm. if, okay, let me ask you this. If I said to you, Robert Downey Jr., what's the first thing that comes to mind? Iron Man. <laughs> Obviously. <Yeah. laughs> what about, um, I, well, I just thought his name, now I forgot it. Michael Keaton. Michael Keegan? Yeah, my, Michael Keaton. Keaton, oh, um... I think of, um, oh, I think of either Birdman or um, what was the one where he was, like, the owner of, it was a recent, like, bioepic of, like, the McDonald's franchise. I don't know. That just Oh, the, the owner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, one of the owners. I can't, I can't remember. I don't know if it was called McDonald or I can't remember the name. I think of it was the founder. Yes, 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 that one, yeah. I think those two. <laughs> I was actually uh, expecting you to say um, Batman or Beetlejuice. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, like CRISPR Reads. I know who CRISPR Reed is, right? Is that the original Superman? Yes, the okay. good one. 
<laughs> the only one. <laughs> okay, one more for you. Okay. Um, who's your favorite Spider-Man? When you think of Spider-Man, who comes to mind? Toby Maguire. <laughs> Hands down. Thank you. That's why I like you. We're on the same page. You no, know, I do like Tom Helens. You know, he's really good. Even though he does, you know, spoil things, and so they don't tell him anything. But for me, Spider-Man would always be Tommy McGuire. Of course, yeah. he got obnoxious. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can always do Spider-Man right now. See what's been 2002 to 2008. So you can do like a 10-year fast forward. Mm -hmm. And you can do like a just different Spider-Man, a more mature Spider-Man. You saw a uh, Spider-Man multiverse. So there you go. You can do something like that. Yeah. But, you know, it's... Well, let me ask you. When I look at you, and you are a beautiful woman, and when I look at you, I do see you being the best friend. You know, um, you could be in a gang if you wanted. Uh, you could be a doctor. But when you look at me, what is your honest opinion, like, acting rise? I can see, like, a te like a professor, a teacher, like, for, like, you know, elementary school kids. Um, I can see, like, the instructor for, like, driving, like, school ed driving. <laughs> and you make like, these comments, like, no, you're not doing that right. <laughs> like, I can see that. Um, I can definitely see, you know, like, um, a worker for um, – like a restaurant, you know, either a server or a uh, busboy or behind the counters at a, you know, a, um, a fast food restaurant. Um, I could see like somebody in the newsroom. Sorry, that's my cat that keeps like running around. <laughs> yeah. <That's laughs> um, cat. yeah, I can definitely think. Um, I can definitely see, yeah, somebody who works, like, for a newsroom or something, like, you know, like, maybe, like, the, <sighs> kind of, like, have you ever seen Office Space? I heard of it. I'm not really okay. a fan of it, but I heard of it. Well, there's, like, this one guy who's, who's in there, and I forget, his, it's been a long time since I've seen it, uh, and I, I know I'm gonna get slapped for this, <laughs> but the, the one guy who doesn't officially work in the building, but <laughs> he, he shows up anyways, you know? <laughs> you know, I can definitely see you on a show like The Office, you know, like the awkward, like, you know, guy that everybody likes and like, it's just a lovable guy on TV. That's what I can say. <laughs> well, I think it's funny you should bring it up. That's the next question. If you can pick your top five TV shows that you want to be part of, what would you want to be part of? Oh, I, I recently watched uh, Queen of the South. It's a, um, I think it's on USA. That was yeah. a really good, uh, really good show that I like because uh, also it had a lot of Spanish actors on the show and there's not a lot of um, programming out there that's just, you know, specifically for Hispanic uh, actors. Um, so Queen of the South, um, I really like Stranger Things. <laughs> I, I really enjoyed that show. Um, my other show, I think maybe, um, I also recently watched, um, I watched a lot of like uh, science fiction shows sometimes, like Watchmen I watched. Um, it was, you know, I enjoyed it. And that's something like that I might be interested in doing, like that kind of genre as well. Um, and let's see. Um, what about like for an example like for me I would say it doesn't matter if it's on the air now it could be past tense too okay okay um, if that helps let me see um, then probably Buffy the Vampire Slayer because that's one of my favorite shows <laughs> um, and let's what else would there be I mean, like a, I don't know, probably like some, like a comedy or something. Uh, I don't know, like maybe in the vein of The Office or um, something like The Big Bang Theory or something like that. Well, you did take one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say Big Bang Theory, Hawaii Five-0, Blue Bloods. 
grim, and suits. Suits, okay. Very nice, yeah. Also, Rescue Me was a good show, too. Is that with um, Dennis Leary? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. I mean, there's some episodes where, you know, it's depressing. My dad's like, we tried to get my dad hooked on it. Like, oh, this is pretty interesting. At the end, the, the, um, the chief, the, the original guy, uh, shoots himself. And my dad said, that's it. I don't want to see any more of this shit. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know, the other episodes get good. You know, it's yeah. good. You know, it's like, nope. That one episode, it said it resonated with me. And and it's good. Some episodes actually resonate with people. And that's how you connect people. But mm-hmm. you do something like that, you're actually got to turn people off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the last seven minutes left. I'm going to okay. pass it over to you. Was there anything oh. you wanted to know? Anything you want to talk about, promote? This is your time. Sure. Um, what is your favorite pastime besides obviously making this lovely show and all your hard work that goes into this? Favorite pastime? Um, hmm. That is a good question. I would say I did two things when I was younger. I used to play with my toys. <laughs> I could do. I can't do that anymore. You know, it, it doesn't feel right when. I guess when you're younger, your hands are smaller, and they're like, "Oh, this is all good." Now you play. To, I help yeah, when like you get hands. older and everything starts to the joints. Yeah. <laughs> now it's kind of like, it's weird. Um, I actually, when I first found something to pass the time. Mm. I was addicted to Pokemon. <laughs> I used to play Pokemon from 12 in the afternoon all the way up until 8, 9 o'clock at night. I used to play um, SmackDown, Shut Your Mouth, on Know Your Roll from, you know, like, same thing, 12 in the afternoon. And that's how I used to spend my days. Yeah. Uh, here, give keep a video game. I keep them occupied. It won't bother anyone. Yeah, I feel like that's like a go-to for most people nowadays is like video games because I'm like, what else am I supposed to do to pass time? <laughs> uh, you can write a book. It's true, yeah. What about you? What do you do to pass the time now uh, and then? Now, uh, well, when this first started, I started like jogging a lot just to like get outside and clear my head and um I worked my way up. Uh, I posted it on Instagram. I worked my way up, like my pro- some progress. Um, I worked my way up to a half marathon. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so t- uh, I took a break. And this today was the first day of me r- getting back and running again after like a three-week break. And I'm like, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> and body's not used to it again. So that was one of them. Um, I wish... Like, so when, before we moved to California, I got, um, it was one car with everything packed, (laughs) like some people do. And unfortunately I had like this shelves of books. And unfortunately I was like, I can't take all this stuff with me, you know? So I left it, um, with family members. And, uh, when I moved down here, you know, I didn't really have a collection of books either. So, um, we have some stuff and a lot. So I wish I was able to, you know, do a little bit more reading and stuff. I mean, I know people like Kindles or um, audiobooks. I, I can't really get into that. I like to have a physical book <laughs> in my hand <laughs> to read. So, um, and it's just getting the motivation to read again. <laughs> you know? So, you know, it's funny. When I was sick in uh, February, I, you know, I always get the flu shot. So I'm going to tell people out there. Always get a flu shot. And I know a lot of people are, don't really do that, but it's always better to save than sorry. Yeah. Unfortunately, I got the flu this year, this past February. And on top of that, I got a stomach virus. So I was pretty much, you know, fun to bed to the guards. Thank God I have a garbage can in my room because I couldn't make it to the bathroom. <laughs> you know, I fun to bed to the garbage to the guards to the bed. And I'm like, well, I'm not tired. What can I do to pass the time? Because I was kind of like, uh, I can't. I don't have enough strength to move. 
handful of sleep, why not listen to an audio book? So I actually listened, again, I lost count how many times I listened to it, uh, to Jurassic Park. And it's amazing how different it's from the movie. Oh, okay, okay. Now, was this the first time that you uh, listened or at least read from of the actual book of Jurassic Park? To be honest, I'm not the uh, best at reading, mm -hmm. so I'm more of an audiobook person. Okay. So I listened to Jurassic Park about 2007, and now 2017. Okay. 16, and then I, then I listened to it again when the power went out, and then I was sick. But it's it was pretty interesting. Then I listened to the second one. Um, then my dad got me hooked on James Patterson, who I would recommend for you. Okay. James Patterson's really good. You know, TikTok, Animal, I Am Michael Bennett. Um, David Baladati's really good. Uh, Tom Clancy's really good. So it depends on who you actually I got into listen to to listening to Motion Comics. Okay. That, I, I've heard that. Like I, I don't know how that how is that listening to comics? Like Oh, there's yeah. two of them. Uh, there used to be Batman Black and White on the PlayStation Network. And so it's like a video, but it would be a comic book video. So you would see it and it would turn the page. And one I can definitely send to you, it's, I think it was 1986, it was Civil War. And it was really interesting. And of course, Spider-Man in the animated series back in 94 did Civil War. And that was a lot better. But listening to it, if it's good actors, you can really get into it. If yeah. It's like, are horrible actors, like, you know... Uh, it is a great book, but these people suck. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it really needs, like, a, well, Michael Bennett uh, for a series, it's great. Do you have the, the main person, and then you have the lead and actress. They're really good, and you want a lot of series together. So it, it only great, it carries a great franchise if there's a strong message to it not even a message more of a good voice you know if you talk it you know, I like to listen to you mm -hmm. and okay you want to listen to this person you don't want to listen to nails on a blackboard for god knows how long and you lose your insanity but you know it's stuff like that it's you're either gonna win or lose mm -hmm. now what is your uh favorite book then or what or you're, or not of all time, if I guess, but recently then? Um, I would say probably, I haven't listened to it in a while. I would say um, I Am Michael Bennett. Okay. I would actually recommend it to everyone out there. It's really good. I Am Michael Bennett. Okay. Now, wrapping up the show, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. Sure. But how can people follow you on social media? Are you on Facebook? Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Yes, I'm on um, Facebook under Melissa Damas. Uh, that's my actor page. And then I'm on Instagram. Um, I'm at America as uh, underscore Mercy. And it's spelled differently, though. It's A-M-E-R-I-K-A -A underscore and then M-U-R-S-I. Oh, absolutely. And don't worry. It will be on the bottom of the screen as well. <laughs> my last question for you is when I approached you for a second, I want you to be completely honest and I want you to say to me, sure. How do you feel after my interviews? Because a lot of people I try to approach to be on the show for a second time. And of course, you know, the video quality was different. The last time was Skype. Now you, you can see the video process. A lot of people don't see that. They're like, Oh, well, it's this guy again. Yo, what are you doing? <laughs> So when I approached you for a second time, what was your honest opinion and what made you say yes and how do you feel now? Um, I, I was fine with you approaching me again. Um, I guess it was also not, you know, I haven't really been doing a lot of um, interviews right now just because of like the state of everything and I have to be in my own, I think everybody has to be in their own mental state to 
feel comfortable and everything. And I felt at this time when you approached me, it was like a perfect, you know, set up because like I felt a little bit better about how things were going. Um, you know, unfortunately because of COVID, like I had to deal with some issues, you know, work wise that got, you know, moved along and I felt in a better place. Um, going into this, I, I was like, I'm, I'm not going to prepare myself because I just want to be open to whatever you're going to ask me. <laughs> so if you notice from like the beginning of this interview to the end of it, you can probably notice that I'm a little bit more open now <laughs> as opposed to the beginning. Um, so I, I think, you know, this is, this is really nice to have, especially during this time. And it's like, it's nice to talk to people that you don't really get to talk to as much as you would, you know, and I feel like it's, a different way to communicate with people now. So I feel a lot better though. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So. Now I'll wrap it up. I do have a couple questions for you off the air. Sure. Uh, it was a real honor and privilege having you on as a second time. And I'm looking forward to part three down the road. Hi guys, my name is Kat Johnston. This is Donna Drake. This is Kayleen. Hi, my name is Kara Svuchek. I'm Julia Brothers. I'm Jenna Curtis. Hey, I'm Jenny Fine. Hi, it's Mimi Chen. Hi, my name is Ella Dorsch. I'm Shauna Toth. Hey guys, I'm Anastasia Edwards. Hi, this is Jackie Nunez. Actress Becky Hayes. Hi, I'm Amelia Rose. Hey there, I'm Saki Miera. Hey guys, I'm Alexandria Denise, and you're watching Keith Andrews' show. He's